YouTubers, and welcome to the test. In this video, I wanted to provide a ship overview for the new Tier 6 Pan Asian Premium Destroyer, the Anshin. I'm going to be comparing this ship up against the Tier 5 Russian Destroyer, the Gievni, and the Tier 6 Russian Destroyer, the Ognevoy. Okay, so to start this off, let's take a look at the differences in the hit points. The armor, not even worth mentioning. They have no armor. All three of them, they have no armor. Survivability, here we go. Hit points. On the Tier 5 Russian Destroyer, it's 13,900 hit points. On the Tier 6 Premium Pan-Asian Destroyer, it is 14,400 hit points. And on the Tier 6 Russian Destroyer, the Ognevoy, it's 15,500. So this sits roughly in between the Tier 5 and the Tier 6 Russian Destroyers in terms of hit points. Okay, so let's get into the fun stuff, the artillery. For the artillery, I'm only going to compare the Anshin against the Gievni, because that's the most comparable comparison. Okay, so let's start right in. First of all, the rate of fire. The rate of fire on the Gievni is 12.1 rounds per minute. For the Anshin, it's slightly lower at 10.9 rounds per minute. Now, where the Anshin beats the Gievni is in the 180 degree turn time for the turrets, 19.1 seconds versus the Gievni's 21.8 seconds. Now, here's some of the similarities. The HE damage is the same. The chance of starting a fire is the same. And the firing range is identical between the Gievni and the Anshin. So down to the next category is the torpedoes. And the Anshin destroys the Gievni and the Ognevoy in terms of torpedoes, and it's more comparable with the tier eight Tashkent. So let's take a look at the torpedo details here. The torpedoes on the Anshin hit for 14,400 damage. Now that's identical to what the Tashkent does. It has 8 kilometer range. That's identical to what the Tashkent has. But you know what the difference is? Torpedo speed. The Anshin has 5 knots faster torpedoes than the Tashkent. That is a taste. Okay, so let's move on to the maneuverability here for a second. The Gievni's maximum speed is 38 knots. The Anshin's maximum speed is 38 knots. And the Ognevoy's maximum speed is 37 knots. Okay, pretty good. The Anshin is faster than the Ognevoy and just as fast as the Gievni. The turning circle radius is identical for all three ships. But the rudder shift time is something interesting. As you see here in the Ognevoy, it's 3.8 seconds. In the Anshin, it's 3.5 seconds. Pretty good. And in the Gievni, 4.4 seconds. So the Anshin can outturn the Ognevoy and the Gievni. And against the Ognevoy, it's one knot faster. Okay, so on to the last category, and that's the concealment. So torpedoes are nice. If you have 8 kilometer torpedoes, you need to remain invisible when you shoot those torpedoes or else you're going to get spotted and the enemy's going to turn out well that is assuming that they're a decent player as we all know there's people that aren't going to turn from your torps no matter what you do but anyways the gievni spotting distance is 6.8 kilometers the ancient spotting distance is 7 kilometers and the augna voice spotting distance is 7.5 kilometers so the ancient fits somewhere in between those two ships but its torpedoes are better, so that gives you a one kilometer leeway to remain hidden, to turn out, drop your torps, and get the heck out of there. Okay, so I wanted to cover one more area with regards to this ship for the review, and that comes down to the camouflage. Now let's take a look at the camouflage for the Ancient. Plus 100% to free experience earned in the battle. I'm going to say that again plus 100 percent to free experience earned in the battle that's the reason why i bought this ship this thing will farm your free experience like crazy it's not unheard of to have 700 to 1000 free experience in a match that's awesome then you have the normal the three percent to detectability reduced by enemy ships as well as 50% to experience earned in the battle. Now, that's nice too, because if you compare that to, let's say the Murmansk, 
camouflage for the Bermansk is only 30% to experience earned in the battle. So the Ancient's giving you another 20% experience earned in the battle over the Murmansk. The camouflage is a taste. So this is a Battle Tier 7 match. I'm up against three other battleships and I'm up against four other destroyers. Two of those destroyers are in the Ancient. So I played 13 battles in this ship, and over the course of the 13 battles, I never really had a match that just blew me away. I never walked away from the computer thinking, oh man, this ship is awesome, I can't wait to play another match in it. Usually what happened was at the end of the match, when I'm looking at the screen and I see how much free experience I actually accrued, that's where I was thinking, okay, I kind of dig this ship. But I never remembered looking at the damage meters at the end and saying, you know what? I took the best ship available and I really wrecked it. That's not this ship. For me, that's not what I like. I never just absolutely dominated a match in this thing. I think my best match that I had, I ended up not recording it. And the second best match that I had, I died. I ended up with about 120,000 damage and our team lost. So who wants to watch, you know, a video where. I will show bits and pieces of that 120,000 damage match, but I'm not going to sit here and focus the entire video on that match because we lost, like I said. <laughs> I'd say the biggest worry that I had when buying this ship was the turrets, specifically the durability of the turrets. And when you get hit, are you going to permanently lose them? First hit, turret hit. Not permanent, but good god, man. It's just ridiculous, dude. When compared to the other Russian destroyers, this ship comes out with about a tier 5.5 amount of hit points. It's about tier 5 guns for artillery. It's about tier 6 for speed. And it's even better than tier 8 for torpedoes. Now, that's not to say that these torpedoes compare with the Fubuki, the tier 8 Japanese destroyer, but when you compare it to the other Russian destroyers, it's better than the tier 8 torps. And that's the only thing that saves this ship, in my opinion. I mean, it's a test. Okay, so what's going on here is there's a cruiser and myself trying to kill this destroyer, but this ship has four 130 mil guns. So this thing is not like a devastator of worlds in terms of its artillery. It's pretty nice tier for tier against other destroyers, but if it gets up against something like a Kiev or a Tashkent, those are the true gunboats. This was meant to be the introductory, the introduction to the gunboat line for the Russians. So this, this just does not have the firepower. Now, if you're going up against a battleship, it does have a 7% chance to catch that battleship on fire which is pretty nice and you can get some damage there. But yeah, if you're going up against like a Fabuki, a Benson, a Kiev, a Tashkent, you're in trouble with this thing. So th th at that point, just get out if you can. You got the speed, just try to get out. So what's happening here is there's a cruiser that's within my range, but he's doing the smart move. He's not having a predictable path when he goes around that mountain. But what I have is I have a Minikaze that's spotting for me over there. So I could see him start to accelerate back up. And what I did is I did put out some torpedoes there, trying to predict where he's going to be when he comes around that mountain. Now, I would have never even shot those torpedoes if I was in a Gievni or a Ugnavoy because I would not have had the range to do it. Is there going to be a torp? T I think I got possible torp tips. Oh, Torp Test. That looks like a test. Oh, that was just a test. That was just a test. Yep, that's a cruiser. You destroyed an enemy cruiser. So I cut forward in the same match to give you all an idea of how good the rudder shift time is on this ship. He's going to shoot torpedoes at me. and You'll get a good look at... Uh, how well I can turn to avoid the torps and make sure that I don't become a torp test. So 
So here's the summary of that battle, and the thing that you really have to take note of is the free experience that was earned. 724 free experience. I only had 52 hits with my guns and 3 torps. I still had 724 free experience. That's amazing. Only 1256 base experience, and I had 700 free experience. There's the taste right there. That adds up to about 40,000 damage. That's pretty good for this ship, but that's not overwhelmingly awesome by any means. I'm jumping to another match here that we lost, but I managed to get some good damage, and that was because of these devastating Tier 6 torpedoes that are equipped on this ship. I just want to show you all just the sheer power that these things have when they connect with another vessel. Now, I will admit, I am being far more aggressive than I normally am, but I'm also not expecting to see the middle just so completely clear and a Nagato coming right at me. And I'm thinking, well, this guy is just easy pickings. There's no destroyers here. There's no cruisers here. He's just out here on his own. I don't even know what he was doing there, to be honest. So the plan was to drop torpedoes, have them run into them since he's heading into me, but not get in the cap circle because I did not want to alert him of my presence. What's actually starting to unfold though is there's two cruisers that are coming from the west back to my position. So now I'm going to be stuck between that cap circle and those cruisers to my left. So I'm going to get torps here, but then look at that. There's an aircraft carrier, so now I'm getting taunted. I know the cruisers are coming in for me, but I see an aircraft carrier heading right for me and a Nagato heading right for me. This is looking tasty. The plan was to hide behind this island as long as I possibly could because this cruiser's coming and he's going to get me spotted. But I still have to reload my torpedo, so I'm not in a big rush to get around that corner. At this point, I know I'm pretty pwned, but the thing is, I need to bring down as many ships as I can to maximize my taste. And this is where those torpedoes just put on a clinic. So I have no choice. I'm spotted. I got one torpid on that Nagato from the previous salvo and uh, yeah I'm heading into the carrier That's the carrier down, but that Nagato was four kilometers away from me. I'm in my smoke, and I'm just trying to stay hidden and reload some more damn torps. Ugh, and that shot nearly killed me. So as I said, I am just hoping that nobody shoots me while I'm in my smoke. I've got my speed burst pop, so that way when I need the speed, I can just instantly get out of there. It lasts for two minutes, so good. Loop sight on the battleship. Now I'm thinking, oh my gosh. Oh, shocker. I lost the turret. That happens all the time in this ship. So I've got about 20 seconds left on my torps, and I don't know if the Nagato turned away from my smoke or if he's heading into me. If he's heading into me, I need to have these torps ready for when I'm spotted. Four, three, two, one. I'm gassing it. I'm about to see where the Nagato is. This is all or nothing. There he is. 
Target lock, shoot the torps. Torps out, torps out. Watch what these do. This guy's got like 70,000 life. Boom. There was four torps right there. Just devastated him. Now he's still alive, but he's not alive on much. So that was an aircraft carrier, and that was a battleship. Now I'm not particularly proud of a moment where I get crushed and die, and I don't kill another ship. But those torpedoes did a ton of damage and really showed the value of this ship. Okay, so let's look at the results here. This is a defeat and I still had 534 free experience. That is amazing. I was second on the team and I'm still getting 534. I can't get past that. That's so much. So this was 113,000 damage and that gives you an idea just how strong those torpedoes are. Basically, I connected with two torp salvos and I ended up with about 113,000 damage. That's pretty damn good. I would say that this ship is okay to pretty good. The main key for this ship is that free experience. And if you put together a decent match in this ship, which sometimes that can be difficult, it's definitely going to reward you. I hope that you all enjoyed the video. If you did like the video, please click the like button. And if you're interested in receiving updates as new videos are posted to the channel, please feel free to subscribe. I'm generally divisioned up with Steel Reserve. Steel Reserve has his own YouTube channel with a very unique series that I enjoy titled History and Combat. I definitely recommend stopping by his channel and checking those videos out. And as always, thanks for watching the test.